Hey y'all, Stephen Rosell here. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about a new bonus tool called Navigate Graph. Uh, some people just want to get a better understanding of how to use it, and other people actually want to disable it. So I'm going to talk about both. If you just care about disabling it for whatever reason, uh, just skip to the end and I'll cover that. Uh, but for starters, I'm going to actually talk about what it does and how you can use it. So the idea with Navigate Graph is that it allows you to access all the different nodes associated with a, an animation or with an object or a rig or whatever it may be. So what you see here is a, is a mash network, and I've got kind of this cool uh, texture shader effect going on uh, with some procedural animation. So if I wanted to access the different parts and pieces that are that are creating this, uh, you can just go into things like the outliner or things like the, the hypergraph to do that. Uh, what Navigate Graph allows you to do is actually access all that directly from the object. So it's part of Bonus Tools. It installs with Bonus Tools. However, it's not in the regular Bonus Tools menu. It's actually in the regular Maya menu. So if you right-click on any object, there is a Navigate Graph menu. And if you go into that, then you are presented with all of the nodes associated with this given object. And you can go into these different kind of subgroups. And this kind of just moves you through the chain of connections, essentially. Now we have the MASH editor. If you're working with MASH, uh, the MASH editor gives you kind of a stack view of all the nodes associated with your scene. You can use that, it's perfectly useful. I use it all the time. Sometimes you just wanna quickly access a node though without having to deal with any other kind of UI. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to access the MASH network. I just right click on this object. I go into navigate graph. Uh, I'll just look for what I'm looking for. I want MASH. I'll just keep going until I find all the MASH associated nodes. And let's say I wanted to change the distribute node, dive into that, and I just select it. And now it takes me right to the distribute node where I can actually go in and I can start to modify the distribution, either distance or the number of uh, instances within that and so on, just like I normally would. Now let's say I wanted to change the procedural animation so I can basically right click, go in here, once again, go into my MASH network and I'll find the signal node. I just select that and then now it automatically loads the signal node where I can go in and I can start to amplify things like the position or I might wanna go in and add some sort of uh, noise on top of this. So you know I can go in and, and increase or decrease the noise, all the stuff that you would typically do with the procedural side uh, of MASH. So I'm not gonna go too far with that, but just to give you an idea. Now, other things that we get access would be the actual input mesh that's driving this mesh network. So I can actually right click. And here I can see that the input mesh is actually a cube. So I can dive into that and then I can select any node associated with that cube. So for instance, I can just select the cube itself uh, or I can actually dive in deeper and I can select the poly create node which allows me to control things like the height of the cube, the divisions of the cube, and so on. So this would allow me to change the creation aspect of that tube. Or likewise, I can go in and I can instead access uh, something like the, the cube node itself, uh, where then I could actually go in and do some kind of an operation, like maybe I wanna do something like a smooth on that node. And if I smooth that out, it's basically gonna turn a cube into a sphere, essentially, and, and then that just gets kind of refed into that network or con continues to be fed into that network. So that's just some examples. Uh, on the other end, I might want to actually go in and access the, the materials or the shade shaders textures. So if I right click, I can go the other direction and I can access things like the Fung network uh, where I can actually grab the Fung shader and then I can actually dial in things like the transparency. So now while this is playing back, I can see the transparency kind of kicking in or I can animate that in uh, uh, over time. And then likewise, I could come in here and I could actually access the texture. So instead of going into the Fung material, anything that's associated with Fung material or whatever material this is, like the ramp, for instance, I can select that. And now I can start to tweak this. So I've just got a ramp that's driving that kind of color transition. So maybe I want to make this uh, more of a blue and, a, and an orange instead of a, a green and a red. So I change that on the texture level. And now, uh, you know, it's just a quick way of of modifying that and getting right back to where I was. So you can kind of see the result of that. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you can do with this. Again, if this is a character rig, you could access things like constraints, you could access IK or blend shapes. If it's modeling, you could access things like construction history, um, you know, any kind of edits along the way, like extrudes or bevels, uh, you can access those using this kind of same graph navigation menu set. Now, with all that said, 
there have been some cases of people wanting to disable this because maybe this uh, interferes with some custom tools that are already using this menu uh, or other reasons, whatever they may be. So with, with any tool in bonus tools, you can actually disable any tool uh, or modify any tool. And you do that by going to bonus tools menu and you go to the help section and then just go to the bonus tools install location. And that will actually open up all of the uh, folders that are associated with bonus tools. And in here, I've got scripts folders for each version. Uh, Python is separate, so some tools are Python. Uh, they're fairly self-descriptive. Most of the tools are Mel. And there are probably um, 100 or so scripts in here, but the one you're gonna wanna look for uh, in this case is called Build Traversal. It's actually named slightly differently, but it's Build Traversal MM, which stands for Marking Menu. So all you have to do is find that. So you can actually just do a quick search, just type in B-U-I-L-D, it'll filter that, and then now I can take this and I can just simply rename it. Uh, and if you just rename it something like XXX or whatever, take the Mel uh, off and that will basically make it unrecognizable to Maya and to bonus tools. And now if I go in here and restart, that's gonna go away. So if I you know, close this particular session of Maya uh, and then reboot, then once Maya comes back, then that particular tool is going to be disabled. So it's a nice way of actually, uh, you know, making changes to bonus tools under the hood if you need to for some reason. So now that Maya's back up, let's just quickly go in and just add a sphere and right click on that. And now you can see that uh, there's no longer a marking menu there. So if I right click, that is empty now. So if you had any custom tool that was using that, that's the way of, of getting it back without the bonus tools interfering. So hopefully it gives you a good idea of what the tool is, why you would even want to use it to begin with, but then if for some reason you don't, how you can disable it. All right, thanks, bye.